wealth, stylishness, elegance. The Kindle Steam Deck is all these things and so much more. With its tiny little battery, meh sized e-ink display, and truly overkill mechanical buttons, it's simply first in its class. Much like the invention of the bicycle, we here at Snapple believe that this is the next evolution in humanity. This is Kindle Steam Deck. So if you're the age where you've recently uttered the phrase, hey, sweet, they're bringing Phineas and Ferb back, chances are really good that you have one of these chilling in a drawer somewhere. This one in particular is very old, as you can see. It is the first one they ever had the touchscreen as a feature. So yeah, it shows you how old I am. And at first you think this might be a little bit of e-waste now, but when you get down to it, it's still got a Wi-Fi chip, a e-ink display, which people are still paying money for e-ink displays for little gadgets around their house these days, and Pebble just got resurrected, so it's still a viable product. The older ones have even fancier features like physical keyboards. This one's got a headphone jack because it's an MP3 player, which they removed in future versions. At their core, these things are just little e-ink Linux machines sitting in our desks, so why haven't we used them for something cooler? Obviously, they have some physical limitations, but what if we use them for something that it really should be physically limited from doing? What if we turn this thing into a Steam Deck? And what if the 90 something percent of you that watch these videos hit subscribe down below to catch the other wacky projects we have going on in this channel? I would super appreciate it. So the first thing we had to do was to jailbreak this thing, which you would think would be easy enough because of the popularity of jailbreaking your Kindle right now, but unfortunately, that winter break solution works for almost every Kindle in existence, except for this one and like a couple of others that the popular Kindle jailbreaking guide lists as legacy. And if it says legacy, you get the kiss of death of saying, basically go scrape the mobileforum.com threads and hope that you can find the relevant thread from like 2011 that people were talking about back when you had an actually relevant Kindle. <laughs> And that's just what I did. The first track that I found led me down a saga that had me downloading a live Linux ISO called Kubrick and trying like four times and failing to get that to boot into a live environment on my desktop computer. But apparently my computer is too new. And so then I cobbled together some really old PC parts in my basement on the floor to create a little workbench computer that was still not quite booting it. And so I then burned a CD image to a burnable CD CD and an external CD reader, and then use that same CD reader to boot the live Linux image on the cobbled together PC in the basement to finally get this thing up and going, which after all the steps told me it had successfully jailbroken the Kindle. But after unplugging it, I couldn't see any signs that it had been jailbroken, or at the very least, I was supposed to find some other files to get it finished or usable or I don't know what. And I spent like a week on that Kubrick saga of bursts of hours trying to get the right computer with the right bootable medium with the right whatever to get the thing to boot so I could jailbreak this thing. And uh, yeah, I wish I had those hours back in my life, but oh well. <laughs> The worst part is though, I'm actually not even sure if any of that helped because then in trying to find the files that were missing to finish the jailbreak process and get Qual, the like application launcher up and going, I then found another jailbreak for my particular Kindle on another kind of mega download thread consolidating popular downloads for older Kindles. And that jailbreak method with the standard kind of reboot and fake update your Kindle and all that seemed to work. And after another couple of hours of reading old forum threads, I finally figured out what supplementary packages I needed. I know a little too much about the 2011 Kindle homebrew scene now, by the way. I finally had a jailbroken Kindle that I could install custom software on. Very importantly, the Kindle VNC viewer, which was the secret sauce to this whole project. Cause spoiler alert, the Kindle itself is not gonna be running SteamOS, but we're gonna be turning it into a very Steam Deck-like device. More on that in a second. So with all that done, great. Now all I had to do was to SSH into the Kindle so that I could confirm that the VNC viewer was working because that's kind of how it works. You just SSH in and kind of trigger the VNC with the right settings. It's just easier that way. But not so fast. This project has yet another very fun roadblock in the way, which is that none, count them, none of the default passwords that are supposed to work for this Kindle were working when I tried to SSH in. 
For root, it's supposed to be Mario. It's supposed to be the default password. That didn't work. Same as for the framework user, that's supposed to have the default password Mario, didn't work. Then you're supposed to be able to use this online tool where you enter your serial number and it uses some kind of hashing algorithm to generate a few other options. Most of the passwords started with Fiona for some reason. Anyway, tried all those passwords, tried all the recommendations, tried all the things, none of that worked. I even tried creating a little like shell script that I could launch from Qual and that would then reset the password to Mario that didn't work. And so that was another delightful time suck to finally drill down to how I could Telnet into the Kindle. If you don't know what Telnet is, I hope you never have to know because I hope it never comes up in your troubleshooting. Basically, it's just like hardware-based SSH and it's super old school. But after Telnetting in, I was able to mount the file system and reset the root password to Mario as I expected it to be in the first place. And finally, we could SSH in with root access and start the VNC server. Easy peasy. Nice. However, starting the VNC server was also not so easy because VNC to the Kindle is actually very particular because the VNC client is very old. I believe it was last updated in 2013 or something according to the GitHub. And so there's not a ton of parameters in the VNC client itself for say rotation or resolution, even just hey, I wanna make sure I have the foreground of the Kindle while I'm casting the PC stuff. All that very behind the scenes. I'll save the gory details, but the hack I had to come up with was after realizing that by manually sending a refresh and displaying a zero in the corner from the terminal while I had the VNC server running, that was the only way I could even see any VNC output on the Kindle screen. And so I created a script, or rather I think I had AI create a script or something that starts the VNC server in the background. And then every two seconds sends a clear the screen and display a zero in the corner command that then forces it to make sure it has an up-to-date VNC screen available on the e-ink. And on top of that, the only way to get it to display in landscape is if you first opened an ebook and set it to landscape mode, because there isn't a gyroscope in this one. It just had a software option that said portrait or landscape mode, and that is landscape mode one direction, not bi-directional. And uh, you better believe that I super glued the Joy-Con grips into the wrong spots at first and had to update that. But yes, that is how I ended up having to VNZ stream my Windows PC to this guy. But I am sure there is something that I missed and this could have been done much cleaner. If you're running a Linux box, this is apparently much more in your wheelhouse because you can summon up a virtual screen and massage the geometry and all that ahead of time before beaming that to the Kindle, but when you're going from Windows, uh, you're just trying to make it work. Oh, and you have to set your Windows desktop itself to a resolution of 800 by 600. So enjoy those nice and fluted pixels. Finally, after all that, now it's time to make the hardware happen. First thing I needed was a base for the Kindle to snap into. And what better than the case it's been snapping into in the drawer for years. And all I needed was a little minor alteration. The second thing we needed was controls. And so we could get a really premium feel in the controls. That's where MobaPad came in and they sent over these really sick third-party Joy-Cons. These are their M6 HD Joy-Cons in particular. And what's really sick is they have these really clicky mechanical buttons as well as these very comfortable grips in the back. So we're gonna have a really premium feel on this really jankalicious project. <laughs> The last thing we needed was something for those Joy-Cons to grip into. And for that, I just found a random model online that's meant to let you attach Joy-Cons to a smartphone and then just digitally lopped off the end that connects the Joy-Con and then printed two of those. And then it gave me these little holder things, which I then just had to super glue in the correct orientation to my little Kindle adapter case thing. Put it all together and we've got a pretty complete looking Kindle Steam Deck package here. But now of course, there's only one thing left to do and that's to actually game on this thing. And why not suffer? Let's play some Rocket League. Let's unlock the Kindle in advance because I can't very easily get to that button once it's in the case. I have to use a pocket knife to do that. I forgot to mention that the Joy-Cons are actually paired to the computer with the Mayflash NS2 adapter. And so that's the magic there. They're connected to the Windows PC directly. So now we can just slot them in here safely. Okay, we're in landscape mode. Now let's kick off the script. There we go, baby. Correct orientation. We've got a Windows stream. All right, all right. Now let's open up Steam. Boom. 
There's that Steam interface. It's a Steam Deck now, babe. Oh, there it is. That's the money shot. It's a Steam Deck. Let's go. My controller will talk to it correctly. There we go. Steam was just a little unfamiliar with my controller type, so we're just doing a little setup here, get it calibrated. Okay, I think my adapter might be tweaking out a little bit, but we're gonna do our best here. We're just gonna pop on over to Rocket League here. Okay. Let's play some Rocket League. <laughs> Here we go, it's loading. I think I need to change my Rocket League settings to be a little less uh, 1440p. Yep, there's the R. <laughs> Let's fix those settings real quick. There we go, them some settings. Let's be kind to ourselves and do an exhibition, shall we? Okay, let's go. Oh, man, oh, where am I? Uh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the ground. Sure, let's. Oh, oh, I see a goal opportunity. Let's just throw some rockets on this. <laughs> this is so stupid. Am I Hollywood? No, I'm not Hollywood. That'd be really lucky if I was Hollywood. Oh my goodness. Let's go, baby. Drive straight. Drive straight. Where did I drive? Okay. Who scored? They scored. How? Dare you. The really rough thing is I'm pretty sure with my uh, adapter kind of glitching out, I'm not even sure the left stick is working. I know the right half of the Joy-Con is working more reliably than the left half of the Joy-Con. I think it's just really tricky for the adapter to bring in both halves of the Joy-Con into one consolidated controller input or something. As you can see, it would be giving us too much more of a competitive edge if we had a fully functioning controller right now. That's nothing against this controller. My gosh, like listen to this. Like I'm gonna hold that up to the mic there. Those controllers sound, those triggers, oh, sound freaking beautiful. The mechanical triggers, like this whole, everything is mechanical. Beautiful set of Joy-Cons. They are being very wasted on this, uh, on this Kindle Steam Deck right now. Ooh, uh, I think something decided it's going portrait, but something says it's going landscape. Whoa, it's like CRT fuzz. You'll see in the B-roll overlaid right now, but I did actually go to a lot of lengths to like grab a heat gun and really make sure things had dried and like a ton of glue had applied to get some structure. Uh, and then I realized I put it in the wrong spot. I guess I didn't give it quite that treatment on the, uh, the second Rage application when I put them on upside down. Well, maybe that was a natural end to Rocket League on the Kindle Steam Deck. But hey, there's our zero. If you didn't notice it by now, that's our zero. We keep reprinting every two seconds to the screen. <laughs> so let's be honest, this project was doomed from the start. It's impractical, basically unplayable, and very unnecessary. But darn it, even though I had a lot of stupid roadblockers on the way, I had a lot of fun building this. It sort of just crosses that threshold of it's just dumb enough to where you sort of have to build it because you just really want to be the one that brought the Kindle Steam Deck into the world. So did the world need the Kindle Steam Deck? No. But did the world deserve the Kindle Steam Deck? Yes. Yes, it did. Not the hero we deserved, but the hero we needed. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please leave a like and a comment below letting me know what else you wanna see me do with janky projects like this. I've got a lot more in the hopper. If you wanna sub to the channel, that'd be super appreciated. And if you like this kind of jank content, you'd also like when I turned a Surface Pro 8 into a pretty solid Android device. Thank you guys so much and have an awesome day.